பில்லிங் அண்ட் ரெவன்யூ பார்ட் அண்ட் அப்பார்ட் ஃப்ரம் தட் கேஷ் ப்ராசஸிங் விசா தி how to match the receipt and how automation this things so did you give me that, that recording from uh, the other day yeah i gave i think uh, let me check cuz i forgot i've been downloading some of your documents that you gave me but i okay. didn't check this one so uh, I, i don't think you gave me that okay no at least problem. not in the whatsapp uh just what the president at i think oh, okay I, I then i'll check it later it. yeah that's fine then as long as it's there i'm okay yeah check it if it is not there uh, maybe i'll give no problem okay yeah and uh, apart from that uh, we have few other options as well so that is for the write off so write off is something where uh, we have a few uh, unreceived or receivable so which will not be uh, uh, given or maybe it's kind of an bad debt defaulted one yeah so for okay. those things we can uh, do the write offs so from uh, write off limit per receipt what is from meaning uh... from is like from uh, maybe 1 rupee to 100 rupee okay okay so how how do you give it in that field then you give it as 1 to 100 or just 100 no here i'll say 1 and here i'll say 100 oh i'm sorry i didn't see the bottom field yet <laughs> i was looking at the top ones okay yeah yeah and uh, apart from that we have uh, the minimum refund amount so whether it is uh, like 1 rupee or i can re- refund even uh, uh, 0.5 so whatever so I, we can just okay. mention the minimum amount here So let's say okay. I give uh, 10 rupees as minimum, so I cannot mm-hmm. uh, refund below 10 rupees. Okay. So usually, do you have any minimum refund, or you just leave it blank? No, we will have. Uh, no, most of the cases, the minimum refund will be one. Oh, minimum will be one. Okay. Yeah, and then we have a uh, charge back uh, due date. so charge back due dates i have entered it as entered date so before that uh, what is charge back uh, functionality so charge that back that was my next something. question <laughs> yeah so charge back is something that uh, let's say we have a customer uh-huh. so who has uh, built almost we have 10 bills so out of it he has one bill as open so in this Ten one bills, bill okay. uh, total uh, bill uh, is for uh, let's say 10000 so okay. out of this 10000 he has 5000 so which has crossed the due, due can you put this on the excel please yeah yeah one minute yeah uh <clears throat> you are you are seeing the excel sheet right yes so let's say there is a customer called hanivel mm-hmm. and uh, we are selling equipments okay 
Tata Steel SL or maybe Tata Auto. So in this case, if you see, Tata Auto is a vendor for Honeywell. Mm -hmm. So Honeywell has maybe let's say uh, three bills. Okay, outstanding. Yeah, correct. No, totally two, three bills. Total three bills, okay. Yeah, just for uh, understanding. Okay. Okay, so if you see here, so the total bill amount is uh, comes around uh, 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 40, 45, 50, 60. Yeah, 60,000. So out of mm -hmm. it, uh, Honeywell has paid it, uh, 60,000. Mm -hmm. So 5,000 is outstanding. So mm -hmm. you see this particular uh, due date for this uh, 25,000 is, let's say, uh, 10th of October. Okay. But today, the actual date is uh, 11th, uh, mm -hmm. 13th of November. Mm -hmm. So what Honeywell says is that uh, instead of keeping this bill open, so mm -hmm. let's open a new bill. And okay. I'll, I'll add this as a part of that bill. So I'll give it as part of that. Oh, OK. Just to close the books. Yeah, just to close this one and open a new one. So what system will do is that to uh, to adjust or knock off this. Uh -huh. So in the reset application, this 5,000 will be adjusted against the chargeback. So okay. after adjusting this, what we will uh -huh. do is that, uh, so system will generate a chargeback invoice automatically. Okay. So we will query that chargeback invoice and mm -hmm. we will make adjustment to that uh, particular uh, uh, chargeback invoice so uh -huh. after making the adjustment mm -hmm. system will automatically create the uh, another chargeback adjustment for the original invoice which okay. means this particular invoice will be closed and uh -huh. we will add this into the new invoice okay so this is the functionality of chargeback so um so let's say now uh, I'm just trying to understand this. So yeah. chargeback is when you have this 5,000 remaining or whatever the amount due yeah. uh, that's remaining, you uh, create a new invoice uh, and uh, apply that there if in that uh, invoice as a line. Yes, correct. But then what does it do in the receipt you said that part is... Uh... So, no, we will, uh, we will have an activity called chargeback. So this will oh, create okay, automatic okay. chargeback in the invoice tray. OK. So will you show me as part of the transaction when we do it? Yes, yes we are seeing that. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> yeah, this will be used, so you will see this. OK. Yeah, we can move on. Yeah. 
and apart from that uh, so that is what you enter what, so entered date is what then entered date means the date you created a new invoice with that amount no, plus entered, whatever the amount entered date is when we enter the uh, receipt actually uh, okay okay and what are the other choices deposit others date are like or... open invoice due date so this will pick the uh, invoice due date so in our okay. case it will pick our uh, 10th of october okay and so isn't it, that useful uh i mean yeah, like, that you know, uh, depends on the uh, requirement so how, how do we want to handle our dates okay so this is only for the chargeback due days so when okay. the chargeback will be in due so i have okay. just entered entered due, entered it okay yeah that's fine and uh, after that, we have uh, this one, the accounting part, which we gave in the earlier part, that is billing and revenue. And uh, we discussed about those two uh, on the top, on the uh, left hand side. We discussed those, right? Auto yes, cash yes. rule set. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Same thing. laughs> okay. Same thing. Yeah. And then we have automatic receipts. So automatic receipts will be uh, coming in when we use the uh, log box. So log box okay. is the one we, we, when we are discussing about the matching and the auto cash rules set and these things. Okay. Yeah. So for those cases, so we have this one, receipt confirmation threshold amount. So if we wanted to have a threshold amount for the receipt, so that we can set in here. Okay. And apart from that, here we have thousand invoices. Which means oh, which system okay. wants to uh, save or commit this particular transaction at mm -hmm. which point? Let's say system uh, imports thousand and system commits it, okay. and again uh, system imports another thousand and it will commit. So similarly, okay. we are just setting the limit for it. Okay. Usually, what will be the standard that you give? Uh, standard for it depends on the uh, customer. Uh, the volume. Yeah, volume. It, it will change the case to case actually. Okay. So usually it will be uh, not only thousand. So for our yeah, case, yeah, yeah, it will be more actually. But uh, is there um, uh, what I was getting at is like is there a limitation, right? Um, only I mean, let's say it can process up to hundred thousand or one lakh. Uh, you know, invoices you can uh, comment. No, like, or you uh, know, system will crash if you give. Too much, too big a number or something. Yeah, that's what. So there are two uh, factors to this. So one is on the uh, requirement of the client. So okay. So so basically, by uh, seeing the legacy data, we will understand the transaction that we will be importing or we will be getting into the fusion application. First thing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the second thing is we have uh, this one what you call uh, the infrastructure. So we have RAM and we have storage and the other things. Mm -hmm. So based on that, uh, we should also plan because straight away if we give, uh, let's say I give uh, 10 lakh invoices at one mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. So system will not uh, process this particular invoices. It will uh, it will kill the job. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. we should understand uh, the infrastructure aspect and we should also understand the requirement from the client end. Maybe okay. if the requirement is to have it, uh, let's say more than lakh or something. So for uh -huh. those cases, we should uh, suggest uh, to increase the storage or other things. So okay. that we should take a separate call with Oracle. Uh -huh. Oh, with Oracle, not, yeah. not with your, okay. Because this is a SaaS, SaaS model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it's a pass, you'll probably have to discuss with your DBA, right? No. Even no? that case, it will be maintained by Oracle. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, so the difference between SaaS and PaaS is that uh, in SaaS, we don't con we don't have control over our application or data. Yes. Uh -huh. So if you see here, we don't have any tool or anything to uh, do even the select query or update, uh, update uh -huh. any particular transaction. Mm -hmm. So all we can do is that we, we can uh, go to the OTB report and we okay. can uh, do the select query and we can identify the data there. So okay. apart from that, we don't have any control over uh, the, uh, what do you call, uh, the uh, table data. Okay. 
But whereas in a uh, pass model, you will have complete control over the table data. You can even uh -huh. update it because you will have all the credentials given to you. Okay. okay. But still the network and the infrastructure Server, okay. handled by Oracle. Okay. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, we have another functionality called the bills receivable. So bills uh -huh. receivable uh, is kind of a functionality where uh -huh. we can use it for, uh, we saw something uh, called uh, bills payable in uh, AP. So uh -huh. similarly, we have bills receivable. So this is uh -huh. kind of an instrument where we can use it. And uh, mm, uh, let's say I have an instrument that I will receive payment at later point of time, but I will receive this uh, instrument as an acknowledgement or uh -huh. kind of an uh, authentication that I can use it for the later time if the amount is not received. So I will have the uh, uh, instrument date and I will also have the maturity date. So based on this maturity date, I'll receive the payment. Okay, it's still not very clear for me. Can you repeat that? Yeah. Okay, so here let's say uh, my invoice date is and uh, my uh, payment instrument date It's 10th October. So what is a payment instrument? When you say instrument, are you talking about a physical instrument? Yeah, physical instrument. It is kind of a document, uh, oh. kind of a letter of credit, or we can say even the check is an instrument, which will be uh, okay, like, okay. we can say even the post-dated checks, like even the post-dated checks will be handled in uh bills receivable it can be handled there i mean okay. it's not mandatory that we wanted to have bills receivable but if at all mm -hmm. there is a requirement that you wanted to have this way so we can configure mm -hmm. bills receivable but apart from okay. that normally also we can have the bills receivable uh, configured okay so when you were saying instrument for me right i was thinking you're talking about uh, tata auto parts <laughs> <laughs> right. so that's why i was like totally confused i was like what is he saying <laughs> Yeah, actually, okay. it's a kind of a physical document, we can say, like uh, okay. check. Uh, check is the best example where, uh, let's say, invoice date is uh, 1st of uh, October. And uh -huh. on 10th of October, uh, customer uh, gives a check uh, for, let's say, 10,000. So for this uh -huh. 10,000, what will happen is that I'll have check dated 10th of, I mean, for 10,000, I'll get check on 10th of October. Mm -hmm. So this will get mature, matured. So let's say maturity, maturity on thirtieth of October. Okay. So basically, so, that's the due date. Yes, correct. So mm -hmm. even though I receive uh, on tenth of October, I cannot encash it on tenth of October. So I'll and be you have to wait on... till the thirtieth. Yeah, correct. Okay. So this will apply for the other payment instrument as well as the post-dated uh, checks. Okay. So normal checks are different. Like I'll, I'll get it and uh, I'll simply go to bank and I'll end cash it. Mm -hmm. But there are cases for uh, the post-dated checks. So okay. for those cases, this will apply. Okay. Yeah, uh, so that is about uh, bills receivable. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that's all we have uh, here in uh, system options. So what is the point of giving those at the bottom bills receivable um, in terms of yeah, uh, setups? So, yeah, so unless we enable it here, so we'll not be able to use the functionality of uh, bills receivable. Uh -huh. Okay, so you have the setup somewhere done. You're just showing me the screen, empty screen now. No, like we will do it when we are doing it actually. Now we are not. Oh, OK, 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 OK. <laughs> I so thought you were already done. Actually. OK, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just give me one minute. Hello. Yeah. 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 Uh, you're asking something. No, I think I'm good. Okay. No, I was thinking um, you already had the setup, so I was like, you know, where do you actually check it, kind of? So that was why I was like. Uh, no, actually, this is kind of a common configuration. Okay. So to avoid the complication, we will not uh, enable that first thing. So whenever uh, we are seeing the particular uh, functionality. Oh, so, so that's when you it. come back and enable that. Otherwise, you don't yeah. have to. Yes, yes. If you see here, refund rental, we will do it. Only when but you have not, the uh, specific scenario, yeah. that's when you come and enable it. Yeah, okay. because those are uh, like optional configuration. Okay, okay. So we are not giving at this okay. point. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So the main ones, the common ones that you just need to fill out for this AR is like the ones that have the star. That's it. Yeah, correct. Okay, okay. Correct. so that not many, many, uh, many fields that are actually required. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, so uh, this will be our first configuration. So unless we do the system option configuration, uh -huh. so we will not be able to proceed with any of our receivable configuration. Okay. So this is our first uh, checklist. So let's assume um, we're starting off uh, with our um, uh, configuration. So when it comes to, let's say, GL, you do the common configuration, so whatever is needed. And then you come, uh, you do the taxation and then come and do this part or you do this part first and then the taxation later? Uh, I mean the <coughs> setup or the, set the transaction. Up. Test setup, setup. Yeah, setup, we don't have any dependency. We can do tax configuration. And after that also we can come here and we can uh, do our Or, or either way you can do it. Let's say you first finish yeah. this and then the end you can do the taxes yes. also. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay, and even uh, same thing goes with intercompany, or is, does intercompany have to be done uh, before or after? Yeah, intercompany uh, system specific. Uh, we don't have any uh, what do you call uh, uh, the uh, dependency, but yeah. it is suggested to uh, do the configuration and then go to intercompany. That is uh, receivables first, taxation, yeah. and then go to the intercompany, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, this also, like uh, the receivable are payable if you uh -huh. wanted to uh, test it also. So for those cases, uh -huh. it is suggested to complete the receivable are payable and then go to the tax configuration. Okay. I'm sorry. 
<coughs> yeah, uh, so here, so we have uh, two configurations. So that is uh, mandatory for us in order to create the receipts. Okay. So we have earned discount and unearned discount. So I'll just uh, take the earned discounts first. Mm -hmm. And this you said is needed for the receipts, not the invoice, right? No, not for invoice. Uh, this is not for the transaction actually. So okay. this is for the configuration, like the receipt method and the classes. Okay. To okay. Uh, complete it when we are attaching the bank account. So this okay. particular uh, uh, receivable activity is required. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this receivable activity plays a, a larger role in terms of like. Uh, I'll, I'll just show this one and uh, also okay. I'll show the what are the activity types that we have. Okay. So in this case, since uh, this I wanted to have as an earned discount, similarly okay. I'll create for unearned discount also. So in okay. this case, this is an earned discount. So I have given the GL account source, which means from uh, which source uh, basically system wants to pick up uh, the code combination or how do system under, understands that uh, this is the account code combination that needs to be generated. So okay. here I have uh, three options. So one is on the activity GL code, which means I can just uh, give directly here, or I can say revenue on invoice. So system will pick okay. from the uh, invoice. And I have a tax rate code on invoice. So based on that system will pick the uh, code combination for this. I don't want to give the other two. So this is a widely used uh, functionality. That is uh, so GL account source. Uh, so it, this doesn't have uh, so this comes from GL, right? Activity GL account. So what I meant is like uh, the ones that we create in the co uh, common configurations where we actually set up the accounts and account yeah. values and all that. Yeah. It's coming from there. Yeah, yeah. yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. And when you say activity GL account, does it go to uh, does how does it know to pick that 8019? There is there a specific reason why it picked that uh, account? Yeah, that, that is the account that uh, we are using for the chargeback. Uh, sorry, not chargeback. Oh, uh, for the earned discount. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So you have to go and choose this, right? Here yeah, in this. Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I was thinking as soon as you selected that it just popped up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, if you are using uh, the taxes for the discounts, so we can specify the tax source. rate code source for this. So we have uh, similarly, we have invoice and the activity as an option. Okay. So based on this uh, system will uh, populate the, uh, what do you call the tax codes or the account code combination for the taxes. What do you mean by activity there? I understand when I look at it, uh, the invoice, okay, it's based on the invoice or whatever lines, it probably uses the tax rate there. Yeah. But then what is activity? Isn't it the, the same? Activity is nothing but attaching our tax rate code. Oh, okay. So if I attach this uh, code, which means I have already defined uh, the accounts for this, so system okay. will pick this particular uh, code and it will generate the taxes and the relevant accounting entries. Okay, what happens if you select none, which means it doesn't do any taxation? Is that what it means? No, still it will do because our uh, default rule is based on the business unit. So okay. for our case system will generate. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you what are the options that we have for the activity type. Uh -huh. So here, if you see, I have our adjustments. So if I yes. wanted to make any adjustment, then I'll have uh -huh. to create a receivable activity. Uh -huh. Similarly, I will have our bank errors and then uh, bank errors again, this will be used in the uh, inside the receivable. This is not for the cash management. Okay. 
and uh, if you want to have so claims are a uh, different process entirely so that is revenue management and uh, yeah. we have the credit card charge back and then we have credit card refunds and discounts uh -huh. is what we saw earlier and for okay. late charges so miscellaneous cash is for something that uh, we don't actually use the standard receipt method so we have uh -huh. two kind of receipt methods so one is standard and the other one is miscellaneous uh, receipts where uh, okay. so how do we uh, differentiate the standard and miscellaneous is that let's say i have an item and for this item i have created an uh, invoice so against this invoice i have created a receipt okay so miscellaneous revenue is something that i don't have any reference to it but uh, i'll create a revenue so okay. this i can say non item revenue or miscellaneous revenue okay so that is when we will need this miscellaneous cash okay yeah and uh, payment and the other things it will uh, take through uh, this one what you call the ap module for the refund okay. and the other thing okay and so you is, so you st where do you define this you define it here in receivables even if it is uh, ap related yeah yes yes we will define it here because if you see this refund so what so there are uh, two cases so we have the reversal option which means we are reversing the receipts and the yeah. other option is to refund it refund the actual amount so which means yeah. let's say i i actually sold uh, let's say 10 quantity yeah. so 1000 each so okay. in this case a customer comes after maybe two three days and he says that i want a refund for this particular one quantity because this is a defect item so mm -hmm. we will ask customer whether we can replace it with the new item or you wanted to have only the refund so in okay. this case customer says that i want only the refund so what will happen is that we will create a refund here stating that uh, this is the payment uh, i mean the payment method and the other uh, attributes so, uh -huh. system will process this from the AR module to the AP module. Uh, so, okay, in okay. AP module, this will create as an uh, payment request. Okay. The invoice type will not be standard. It will be a payment request. So, okay. we will pick this payment request and we will process for the payment to this particular uh, customer. Okay. So, uh, do you plan to show that? Uh, yes, yes, that is part uh, of our... <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me, yeah, everything uh, is like a heart attack. <laughs> no, refund and the write off and these things are part of it. Yeah, okay. This Just thing, show and, me so uh, that something I can blab when some interview comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this will be uh, used uh, in uh, business. So this will we will be covering. So this and APR netting and uh, the revenue recognition. Uh, yeah, tell me things. all those. Because <laughs> like at least one module, let me be proper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see those things. Okay. Yeah, similarly for receipt write off and. Uh, so why do they have a refund then separately? If they're doing the prepayment or the payment, uh, you know, as you said, uh, by sending it uh, to the AP. So why do mm -hmm. we have a separate refund activity? No, refund is for uh, this one, right? For so even though we are paying it in uh, what do you call uh, in AP module. But still, mm -hmm. we wanted to record it in the uh, receivable model, stating that this uh, refund is has been uh, initiated, and we okay. will have the reference number for this refund. And okay. we can take this reference number and we can pass it to AP uh, user, and AP user will uh, check and tell us that whether this refund is processed or it is in progress, or okay. uh, it has been remitted to customer bank account. Okay. Yeah. So we will need this. Okay. Short yeah, and then we have a uh, short on debt. So when will we use this uh, short on debt? So we have a uh, receipt method. So, so there are different ways of uh, recognizing our, uh, what do you call, remitting the receipts. So we have a uh, manual, we have standard, and we have factoring. So standard is simple. I mean, manual are, are the direct one is simple that I, uh -huh. I don't have any interaction with a uh, bank. So I just create mm -hmm. receipt and a system automatically says that uh, this particular receipt is cleared. Okay. So this is the first option, which we call direct. And we okay. have second option that is standard. So standard uh -huh. is something that we will remit to bank and bank will give us a statement 
and we will match that particular statement with our uh, system transaction and system is mm -hmm. going to get uh, reconciled and we will see the cleared status of the result. Okay. Is that the log box? No, this is not log box. So this is the normal process which we follow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is second option. And third option would be uh, our factoring. So what is factoring? So factoring will be used mostly for the US and the Europe uh, customers. Okay. Mostly uh, US actually. So what will happen is that so let's say I, I have an uh, result or uh, getting matured on so-and-so date, uh, let's say 10th of uh, November. So, but I wanted to have uh, the amount, I have uh, what do you call the deficit uh, on particular day, let's say 1st of uh, November. Uh -huh. So what I will do is that I will take this receipt to bank and I will encash with maybe, let's say 80% of it, and I'll take uh, the cash from the bank and bank will receive this particular uh, receivables from the customer directly. So bank will hold that uh, particular 80% uh, with them and they will give only the 20%. So it is kind of an surrendering our receipt and end cashing the uh, receivable. Okay. Yeah, so that is- It's what almost I'm... like uh, taking it from the bank. Yes, correct. It is kind of a okay. uh, short on it. Short on it, okay. Yeah, so, and then unknown discount. So this we saw already. So that's what. So these are the mm -hmm. options that we have in the receivable activity. So um, as a consultant, when you are given, uh, so do you uh, ask them all the activity types or uh, do, I mean, you know, they uh, do you ask the question or they give you the requirement itself directly? Yeah, because they may of, not know everything, right? Yes, yes. So as a part of our requirement gathering, we will also suggest that we have so and so functionalities. If I mean, okay. even the customer will definitely ask us. So mm -hmm. we have this requirement. So how are you going to handle it in fusion? But okay. apart from that, we will also suggest we have so and so options. We can utilize this. Okay. So in that case, you have to uh, create one for each, right? Like how you have unearned and earned. Yes, correct. correct. Or whatever you have right yeah. now, unrealized or whatever yeah. it is. But so you'll have to go create every single type, activity type. Yeah. Okay. You'll have to create every single activity type for each business unit. Let's say we have 100 business units. We uh -huh. will have to create, <coughs> create separately for all 100. Oh, dang. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, I wanted to ask you this one. Um, so, what is that uh, rapid implementation thing? So, you can use those kind of things here, like this kind of repetitive work? Rapid implementation is kind of an uh, article that is Excel based or this one. I don't think. Yeah. Rapid implementation I've seen for, that. Yeah. It is Excel based thing. So that is uh, for uh, what do you call the vanilla implementation, we can use that. Where we don't okay. have any custom in this thing. To, to to reduce the effort and these things, we can use the rapid implementation. But you can't uh, use them in uh, for doing these kind of configurations? Yeah, I don't think we have uh, for the receivable activity. Uh, no, no, not just the receivable activity. What I'm getting at is, uh, do can we use that for the configuration itself? Um, you know, like we can use like even the ledger and the uh, what do you call the payable part. So okay. we can use that uh, functionality. Uh, I'll do one thing. I'll show maybe tomorrow. The rapid yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Not no. I was just wondering when you said you have to yeah, create, yeah. let's say, uh, hundred uh, business units, and then let's say if there are twenty of these. Then if you keep yeah. doing that, it's a lot of work, right? Is then there a simpler way of doing things? Is my question. Yeah. Uh, but uh, rapid implementation will not. I don't even us. know how you do rapid implementation. I was just curious. That's it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Uh, so uh, there are few things that rapid implementation can help us. Okay. But uh, the other things are like manual activity things. Okay. Because Oracle doesn't want to uh, load uh, something directly into the uh, base table when mm -hmm. it comes to the configuration of the setup. So for those cases, what we'll have to do is that uh, we'll have to do manual work. So I don't think receivable activity will be part of it. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll check and I'll confirm. 
Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, but a few there. things are mandatory. Even if you take EBS, so we will have to do manually. Mm -hmm. So similarly, we have a few things uh, left open. But do you use that rapid implementation while you are working? Uh, no, that depends. I, I mean, I haven't used it. Uh, okay. For other uh, project, one of my colleagues, he uh, used it. Yeah. So we have an option. So it depends on the requirement. Uh, so can we use it? Uh, so okay. based on the feasibility, we'll try. No, the word sounds rapid, right? So it's maybe yeah. quicker. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no problem. We'll see it tomorrow. So that's it uh, on the receivable activity. Yeah, so apart from that, if you see, uh, okay. sorry, I'm clicking again the same page. So the one that we just did was the previous step, right? The manage approval activities. No, chief, not approval, sorry. Receivable activity. activity. <laughs> I'm looking at this approval talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so far, uh, th this we will see when we are seeing the actual uh, uh, reset write off and these things. Uh, but this thing I'm just showing as a part of initial configuration. So, if you see okay. here, I'll have to set up uh, the username. I mean, I need to give up to limit. So, okay. for this, I have picked up uh, three uh, document types one is adjustment, refund, and uh, I have reset write off. Okay. So I can give negative amount in the minimum and I can say positive amount in the uh, maximum so that okay. I, I will not have issue in approving it. Okay. But in re real time, we will get the approval uh, minimum and maximum limit from the uh, customer. So the one that is there is just the system generated one? No, not system generated. I, you I just created, put it? Yeah. Okay. 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 So why is that you have, oh, it's a, why do you have a negative? Yeah, uh, that is for rare case. If you wanted to use it, I just uh, enabled it, but it's not mandatory to have it in a negative actually. No, but why why do you have it in a negative? Is, is it like a number line where it's going from negative to positive or something like that? No, no, it will not happen. So that's just, I, I just care. Usually okay. it will be uh, one to so and so amount. Oh, okay no. okay so you don't usually you don't typically yeah. give it as a negative okay yeah. <laughs> i was just wondering why it... okay and uh, when you come here right username yeah. is um you gave us arun 12. Yeah. um so um so before this what is that you need to do in terms of um your um your user in in terms of what do you call uh the roles do you no. need to give any specific roles or you can just mm. come and attach the username here? No, I can just come and attach here. So only restriction. So it doesn't we... specifically need any receivable roles or anything yeah, like that. We, we don't need it. Uh, so only uh, thing that we have is that I cannot set uh, approval limit for my own uh, rule. I mean, own username. Okay. So, uh, so we will... Yes. As... Yeah, so we assume that since it's an approval amount or, you know, it's a min max. Um, so we are assuming Arun 12 is the manager. Yes, correct. Right, okay. Yeah, uh, and then we have uh, the customer billing uh, part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll just show you this part, uh, the line ordering rules and the grouping rules, uh, mm -hmm. but we cannot use this, uh, use this particular functionality since we don't have uh, the uh, supply chain module or the third party application uh, with us. 
Uh, but still, okay. I'll show you and I'll explain the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember this from my previous companies. <laughs> okay. Interface yeah. lines, tables, and all. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. what, what will happen is that, so let's take uh, this one uh, order line. So for the order line, basically we will have uh, four lines that we have set up. So that is sales order and sales order uh, line and ship date and ship for you. It means for okay. freight or order. So uh -huh. we can capture this information in case of order management. So okay. in case of uh, external uh, transaction that we are trying to import into Fusion, so for those it cases, maybe we can utilize this particular attribute called uh, attribute line one, line two. So we will define okay. a template for this. So uh -huh. in this mapping template, we say, if this is an interface line attribute one in Fusion, so what will be okay. the uh, particular field that will be picked up from the uh, legacy or maybe uh, what do you call uh, the third party application? So okay. based on those mapping, we will give the attributes here. Okay, it just doesn't have to limit to just these two, right? Yes. If let's correct. assume they have a hundred or something, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there number. Yeah. So you can have that many number of attributes. Yes, yes. Correct. Okay. So you just gave it here as a sample. Yes, correct. Okay. And uh, the ones that you have uh, order line or. Uh, line order right those yeah. are all um, related when you uh, implement the supply chain right yes, correct. Correct. and um, so the consultant who's working with the supply chain actually defines all these we assume no, or are we assuming be... that the financial uh, consultant does this yeah this will be defined by us uh, financial consultant okay so um, so in order to do this on transaction attribute if you're a financial con um, uh, consultant and you have a separate test, um, SEM consultant. Okay. So they give us all the attributes that need to come into the uh, Oracle, right? Yeah, we will discuss with them and uh, we will get the relevant inputs and we will set the uh, transaction attributes. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Bill more? Yeah, yeah. So what's that project lines? Is that something that we need to do also? No, that is not mandatory. I mean, that was created by someone, I think. Okay, so for us, it's just order and uh, that uh, third party, right? Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, Which created... third party can be named. So the name can be anything, right? Yes, it's anything. Okay, it doesn't have to be those specifically. Okay. Yes, it's... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and then we have a grouping group. Okay. So basically here, if you see, we will attach the line ordering rule to the grouping group. Line, okay. So this is the one that we attach to our system option default. Mm, okay, yeah. yeah. So based on this rule, basically system will uh, generate. So irrespective of the customer uh, system is picking uh, default as a rule to generate uh, the auto invoices. But this default was something that was created by Oracle, Oracle right? Seeded one. Yeah. Yeah, seeded one. So uh, do you get to do anything? You don't have to define anything, right? In terms of uh, the name? No. Other uh, than default, do you have any custom things that you can define? Yeah, yes, yes, we can uh, define it. So here, if you see, I can just add. Oh. So here, if you see, someone has added uh, external source. Okay. So similarly, we can add our own this thing. Okay. So basically, you have to first define this, and then only you can do the system options. Yes, correct. Uh, okay. So step one has to be this no, one. No, no. We will uh, define the system option. And then at later point of time, uh, we can attach it. At initial okay. thing, we can attach to default and later point of time, we can change it. We to can come our... and change it. Yeah. Okay. Or, or you can come and do this first also, right? 
No, I mean. Uh, no, I'm just saying. I know it may not be the practice, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. If, if what happens if you do this one first and then go back to your system options? Yeah, we can do it. Uh, but uh, I mean, you used to be. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. 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 So uh, what we will do is that we will give a name for it, and we will attach a line ordering rule that we created in the earlier setup. So, so does will... it let you manipulate that or change, update that name? Can you delete that? This one. Default? No, no. Default. Will you let? Will the system let you just uh, remove that and enter your own name there? Yes, yes. We can enter our own. I can enter anything. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm attaching the line ordering rule. So basically, okay. line ordering rule. What it will do is that it will pick uh, the sales order, or it will pick the particular transaction, uh, and uh, it will uh, basically uh, inform the system that uh, this is the line items that needs to uh -huh. be grouped, brought into the system, and. Okay. This particular option, the grouping rule. So this basically uh -huh. defines that whether it needs to be uh, uh, grouped under one transaction or it needs to be grouped under the multiple transaction. So this is what actually defining it. Okay. When what do you mean by multiple transactions or one transaction? Yeah. Let's say if I have an invoice, yeah. and in invoice I have a number of lines. Let's say ten lines. Yes. Right. So uh, line ordering rule, um, let's say test invoice is your uh, third party related, uh, whatever transactions are coming in. Okay. So uh, if that's the case, uh, based on this rule right now, right? Whatever yeah. you have here, yeah. how does it, uh, uh, how does it group? Yeah. Let's so, say the 10 lines are there and I don't know how yeah. it's going to group. Yeah. So lines are grouped under this particular configuration. So now grouping an invoice, so if you see here, so we have uh, three options, credit memo, debit memo, and we have invoice. Uh -huh. In this case, I select invoice. And okay. here I give a group by. So based on what parameter system should group this particular invoice. Okay. So here I have multiple options. So in this case, I have given only the accounting rule ID. So apart okay. from that, I, have, I can give the third party registration ID, and if I have mapped uh, the attribute one so that I can give it, or if I wanted to create a specific invoice only for a particular item, so that mm -hmm. I can give it at the item inventory level also. So similarly, okay. we have uh, multiple options to group this particular uh, invoice. Oh, okay. Yeah, so these well, are the I'm options wondering. that we have. So is there a way you can uh, rename uh, the, in let's say uh, the, uh, what do you call uh, interface, whatever was there, uh, interface line attribute one, right? Yeah. Instead of that, can you give a name? No, right? No, that we cannot. That you can't change. You yeah. have to pick what is here. Yeah, because that is Oracle uh, architecture. So we cannot okay. change Oracle structure. Okay. Yeah. So if you see here, so we have a sales order. So if I select mm -hmm. sales order, which means if I have created uh, this sales order as an 001 with uh -huh. uh, 10 lines, which means system is going to pick this sales order and going to create one invoice. So which yes. means for one sales order, one invoice. So this is the yes. rule. So uh -huh. this is how system will create the invoice. So similarly, we have sales order uh, date. So which means, mm -hmm. let's say I have a sales order date as 10th of November. So okay. in 10th of, on 10th of November, I have created 10 transactions, which means system will pick all these 10 transactions and it will generate one invoice. Okay, yeah, yeah, got And it. we have sales order line. So similarly, we have a lot of options inside this uh, grouping rule. So based on this rule, system will uh, create the uh, invoice or it will okay. decide how I wanted to create this, uh, uh, what do you call uh, the invoice. Uh -huh. But uh, who who decides that? In the sense, no, I, no business gives you uh, the you know by what you have to group, or do you suggest uh, the business how it can be done? Yeah. Uh, so we will get the requirement, and based uh -huh. on the requirement, we will decide that, that configuration should be uh, based on the uh, sales order or sales order date. Uh, but 
business will not give details of it so only at the high level like i wanted to have one invoice for uh, maybe three uh, sales order or for with one invoice maybe i wanted to have uh, what do you call uh, multiple uh, lines so similarly business will okay. give the requirement based on that we can uh, give our parameters here to generate one okay. invoice okay so when you say accounting rule right the first option that's there on the top yeah um, accounting rule id so yeah. what is taken uh, into consideration there when you say accounting so accounting rule is nothing but our uh, the thing so we have something called revenue recognition so yes. for that we will have the accounting uh, rule so instead of uh, taking this uh, uh, what do you call the rule name i'm just picking the rule id so which okay. means whatever transaction that falls under this particular uh, id rule id and so for each business unit we might have one or two rule also so okay. I, i pick the rule id so the, that that uh-huh. will be part of my sales order so okay. based on or maybe third party application so based uh-huh. on this rule i create this transaction or invoice okay what do you normally choose i mean like in practice so in practice it is suggested to have a uh, sales order date sales if it order, is from okay. order management or okay. if, if it not, is from yeah if it's not from sales order i mean chi sorry order management what do you do so that depends on the uh, client to client uh, so that differs so oh, if you we... have third party option also right yeah yes yes yeah okay yeah so these are the options that we have uh, in uh, uh, the auto invoicing so based on this rule system is going to create the uh, invoices mm mm-hmm. yeah so if you see here so this is the uh, inter company rule that uh, we gave so based on this is seeded on oracle uh, given this option So based mm-hmm. on the system will uh, generate the auto uh, invoice. Okay. Global intercompany. So that's also seeded. Okay. Yeah. So how do you know in this one which is seeded? Of course, I know this is a test environment. Yeah. <laughs> in the regular one probably will have just have the seeded ones. <laughs> yes, correct. Before you start okay. any configuration, so if you search uh, whatever we have is the seeded one. Yeah. Yeah. for me even test when i look at this so there are so many things which is seen and how do you recognize uh, so yeah okay so we have a transaction type mm. okay before transaction type let me uh, complete the auto accounting mm mm-hmm. okay so here so what what is our auto accounting is that auto accounting will let us to define or let us to inform the system that this is how my account code combination or the receivable and revenue should be generated so if you okay. see in payable modules we will have mm-hmm. to select uh, each accounts manually yes so similarly here also we will have to select it manually so to mm-hmm. avoid this particular uh, manual selection so what we can do is that we can do auto accounting so mm-hmm. is this mandatory to have auto accounting for all the transaction no we don't need uh, this option to be have for the manual because mm-hmm. if you see manual anyway we can uh, choose it from the uh, list but mm-hmm. this will be mandatory when we import the transaction from either order management or third party application okay because there if you see system will not understand that from where i should pick the account code combination here in this case we can pick it manually and we can do it but when the system is processing it it will mm-hmm. not understand and it will go in uh, error like it will stuck in interface so okay. interface will validate all those things and we will have those issues so for mm-hmm. that what we will do is that we will uh, assign a business unit mm-hmm. and <coughs> to the business unit we will have this option Okay. So we have auto invoice clearing account. 
-hmm. and we have uh, the receivable account and mm -hmm. then we have revenue account and we will have tax account okay so apart from that the other accounts for are for the uh, what do you call the revenue recognition and the other thing so this things okay. we will see when we are seeing the revenue recognition process okay okay so these are the four mandatory setups that we need and apart from that if we are having freight so we should uh, add it for freight as well okay so what is the difference between the receivable and re revenue so receive revenue is something that uh, after I, you realize that no like uh, receivable is something as a whole like let's say i i, I have 10 lines in the yeah. uh, invoice uh -huh. so this 10 lines will be uh, treated as in revenue yes because i might have item one item two item three for uh, till item 10 so uh -huh. i will say either i can use the same revenue account or different revenue account but apart from that mm -hmm. my revenue will be segregated but my receivable will be as a whole like let's say 10 lines each mm -hmm. thousand and uh, mm -hmm. ten thousand as a whole so here mm -hmm. my revenue will be thousand each uh, line and my okay. receivable will be ten thousand okay it's taking it as a whole that yeah okay okay yeah so these are the options that we have uh, for uh, this one auto accounting so this uh -huh. will be used uh, only in case of uh, or you call the auto invoice or importing the invoice from the external system or this external application. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is the uh, functionality of uh, auto accounting. Mm -hmm. So and then we have the transaction type. Mm -hmm. I think I didn't uh, show you uh, this one, just one moment. So for uh, every business you, uh, unit, you have created receivable and revenue, just these two? Yes, yes correct. Uh, so these two are the most important ones. Is that why you created two or, or yeah. uh, is it, I mean? Yeah, these two are most important uh, because unless we have this defined, so mm -hmm. the system is not going to recall or the automatically create uh, the combinations. So we will have to okay. create it manually. So that is the reason. Okay. I gave mm -hmm. uh, only for this two. So it's not mandatory that we need to give it. So we will be able to pick it from there as well. Okay. So uh, tax is not that important when compared to this. Yeah, if, no, it's not like that. So if we have tax, we can uh, depend for tax as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just show for, for this. Thank 
So if you see here, so I am selecting, uh, okay, it is already defined. Somebody is already created. Yeah, for almost all the bees. <laughs> So, similarly, for the receiver, uh, this is for receivable. I'm uh, picking up this particular uh, uh, rule, mm -hmm. but apart from that, we will create for the other account type as well. So mm -hmm. here, if you see, so I ha hmm, there's no value source. So once you define it, you can't go and check, right? That's why you're not able to pull up the ones that you already have. Yeah, I think it is this, so that's it. So can we just search and see what comes up? That yeah, uh, search, uh, I'll not be able to... Uh, open it, right? You can't open it. Yeah, because the page is uh, killing itself. Okay. Oh, it's getting hung up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is. Uh, but seen. what if you were uh, to edit this later? Can no, you do it from edit. here? No, no. We cannot edit it. Only thing is, we should delete it and uh, create a new rule. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the page is not loading. So I'll explain it. Uh, this one. So yeah. Yeah. So here, if you see, I, I have uh, three options. So mm -hmm. if it is receivable, I can choose it from the transaction type, mm -hmm. or I can choose it from the customer site, or okay. I can choose it from the sales uh, executive, salesperson, uh, this thing, configuration. So from, the, okay. <clears throat> from there also, we can pick it. Okay. So usual practice is to maintain at the customer. Okay. So we will have the customer site. So inside the customer site, basically we will mention all these things. Okay. And uh, when you choose this, right? So uh, so it uh, you, it came up with the four whatever segments that you created. Yeah, is correct. No so, segment created in the sense uh, we cannot give the segments here. So instead, we will attach the code combination of the segments inside this uh, setup that we are giving. Either it is transaction type or the customer site. Okay. So no, but what I meant is like when you selected the business unit, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. As soon as you select the business unit, it's defined. It's giving you the, uh, you know, the structure itself there, right? Yeah. Yes. In yes, terms yes. of segment. Yes. Okay. Yes. And for each segment, again, you are adding whether what uh, this uh, whatever value or whatever yeah. that is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so these are the uh, three options. So basically, we are uh, defining the upon code and customer site. And we are attaching the customer site here in the auto accounting. Uh -huh. And okay. uh, we have other option like uh, we can give it uh, the default value. Okay. So which means what, what does it mean by adding? I mean, you know, I know you're saying you're adding the customer site, right? So uh, how do I put, how do I word this? Um, customer site. Uh, huh, yes. Yeah, uh, when we are creating the customer, we will see, but for now, uh, mm -hmm. I'll just say this one. So we have a customer, so customer site can be multiple. So for mm -hmm. each site, we have an option of attaching our business unit, ledger, and account code combination. So that is for the uh, receivable revenue, freight, tax, other things we can attach uh, the account codes there, and we can okay. attach it here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so in this case, when we say customer site for this business unit, so for all customers, it will pick only from the customer site. We cannot have a half customer and half from the transaction type. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's it. So it's basically uh, running it based on the customer site. Yes, correct. When you give it as a customer site, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so the uh, last option that we have is to give the constant value. So when I use uh, this particular business unit, so which mm -hmm. means this will be the value that will be generated for all my auto invoices and all my invoices. So if it is manual invoice, very well, I can change it in the uh, distributions. Uh, but uh -huh. if it is on the uh, particular, uh, let's say, uh, importing from third party application, so mm -hmm. my uh, Combination will be always similar to this one. What our combination? Oh yeah. Uh, so so you give the receivables combination here then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mostly it it is not used because if you see, uh, I have uh, different customers. This uh -huh. will be used when I have same account maintained for all the customers. Yeah. So for those case, I can use this. Uh huh. So apart from that, let's say I have different accounts for the customer. So for mm -hmm. those cases, I cannot use the constant value. Instead, I will pick from the customer site. Okay. Yeah. So that's it uh, about the auto accounting. Okay. So the next uh, uh, checklist is transaction type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here I have uh, my uh, reference data set. Mm -hmm. So if you see, so I have at a Tata Auto 03 RDS. So mm -hmm. on top of this particular reference data set, system will uh, let us to configure or let us to do any kind of transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have at So is uh, that uh, the Tata Auto 03 RDS you specifically created for this one? Or was it already uh, the RDS that we created earlier for the previous modules set up? Yeah, uh, so, sorry, I missed your question. Can, can you repeat once? No, no, what I'm saying is, did you define this RDS specifically for this transaction type or was it already there in the system? I mean, for uh, the previous configurations that we did for the other modules, is no, that the like, same RDS that you're using? Yeah. Yeah, I'm using the same RDS, but uh, this RDS I, I created when I uh, was creating the business unit. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh -huh. we are creating the, uh, yeah, that's exactly why I'm asking, you know, is yeah, it that same thing or is it different? Yeah, uh, same thing. 
Okay. Yeah, just one minute. Yeah.
Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, small agent work. So yeah, yeah. Can no. you can we'll uh, continue tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, thanks.